Hello, everyone. Welcome to Spirit Switchboard. I am your host, Carrie Lynn Shelhorn, and you are joining us live on the United Public Radio Network and the UFO Paranormal Radio Network, 105.3 and 107.7. Today on the show, we have Melissa Payon Soma. She is a chakra specialist, Reiki master, psychic medium. Okay, and Melissa, <laughs> <laughs> metaphysician. Last week, I was like promoing this at the end of the last segment, and I kept tripping over that word. I don't know how many times I tried to say it. My brain, really? was, oh, my brain was going faster than right. my <laughs> And I just needed to <laughs> slow myself down. It was the funniest thing. I was laughing at myself. You're probably yeah. tapping into my energy. <laughs> Squirrel on Red Bull. I was I like, do that all the time. <laughs> Okay, so mentor and five-time world champion martial artist, she has been studying the craft for over 30 years and is an eclectic witch specializing in empowerment, wellness, and self-mastery. Her focus on self-mastery has the study of chakras at its core, resulting in the moniker of the chakra witch. Thank you for being here today. Thank you so much. It's, it's just, really a pleasure. I love your work. I love your um, your show, you. and everything that you do. So it's it's an honor to be here. Thank you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> and you know, Ditto. I was I was thinking um, while I was doing a little bit of research. Mm -hmm. uh, you and I, well, I used to have the same color hair. I used to be a really? hairstylist. Oh yeah, I was a hairstylist before stepping out of the witchy woo closet and just you know mm -hmm. taking one of yeah. the of all of who I am. And yes. uh, there's some days I miss that red, but I, I, yeah, embracing where I'm at now and loving it, but I sure <laughs> love the color of your red hair. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. All of, all of your pictures are surrounded in color. Oh yeah. Well, you know, I, my, uh, <laughs> my whole background, just everything is color yeah. with me. So um, I guess it's, that's that chakra thing. So of course I want to do, the podcast from my blue room for the throat chakra and everything and get that kind of rolling. So it just, it's all about right. color. Do you find, let's, let's start right back from the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, give me a little bit of background about your journey. Oh, okay. were you into, were you an intuitive kid? Creative yeah. kid? Yes. Yes. Um, honestly, I noticed I think the first thing I just kind of discovered was um, quite by accident was the mediumship. And that came in at around age seven. I noticed that one. And um, that was the year that it was a little scary at first because I just, I it kept predicting deaths. Oh. Coming deaths. And, and I didn't really know how to take that. And, and my parents started kind of looking at me askance and everything, but what happened was I had this one dream one night and I was very worried about my uncle Tony who had cancer and he didn't have much time left. And I had a dream of him and he just showed up and he looked wonderful. He looked amazing. He looked so happy. He was head to toe in a white suit. He had a white fedora tipped off because he used to like to do that with the fedora and everything. So and, awesome. and I was standing there with him and it just felt so real. And he just, kept, you know, he, he kept patting me on the shoulder. He said, kiddo, just tell everybody I am just fine. Not to worry. Everything is great. I am just fine. And when I woke up in the morning, I just, I remember running. It was like Christmas. I felt so great. And I ran into the living room and I said, uncle Tony says he's just fine and not to worry no matter what happens. And just as I said that the phone rang to say that he had passed. Oh. And but at that point, I knew where he was, so it helped me. And, and I remember my mother pulling me aside and and said, "He told you, you know, he he came to you." You know, she explained it to me. So uh, I was very lucky in that respect because most people would not have given me that type of reinforcement. No, not at all. No. And, and I mean, who wants to be right about a death? So. No there is finding that emotional space to be okay and, and understanding that it's about holding the space for the other people around us. But as a child, we can't, we don't have that emotional intelligence yet no. to do that. No, but the one thing that did save me is, um, of course, you know, what my mother had said, but that feeling was so overpowering 
that I just absolutely knew he was fine. Yeah. And it was actually difficult for me to come back. Like when I woke up, I was, I was, I felt wonderful, but I didn't really want to come back. No, oh, I feel that. I get it. 100%. And yeah, but it's just, a home feel and it's an unconditional it love that we don't feel here. Yes, I felt like I finally belonged. And that feeling, I just was always chasing that feeling afterwards. And the only other time that I ran into it soon after that was when I was around 11. And that was when my parents put me in martial arts and I was all about the meditation. I love the meditations because I kept touching back on that feeling. It was just oh, so wonderful. And I would come out of the meditation and I would just feel so energized. I was like, I remember how this feels. I remember how this feels. And it just made everything more powerful because I mean, when I was taking martial arts, I mean, I'm, I'm a dinosaur. I started in like 1983. So this was, there were no men, there were no children. I mean, I'm sorry, not no men, no women. There was nothing but men. There right. were no children. There were certainly no women, very few. So I, again, didn't really feel like I belonged, but there were things like the meditation, there were things like that spirituality that comes out in martial arts that really helped me through. So I was very, very blessed to get those types of um, experiences at that young age. And it's, you know, what I, my thought when you're talking about uh, connecting to the other side and being open intuitively and then having the groundedness with yes. uh, the physical activity, but it's also moving energy. Like you're, yes. you're moving that energy through your body at the same time too. And I find a lot of people now are so disconnected from their bodies that they don't understand how their intuition is actually working through, like through, through them. Yeah. Yes. And um, I, there's, and there's there are always those spiritual practices where they're trying to get you to transcend your body. And I really don't feel, I, I, I'm always a little bothered by those types of teachings because yeah. your body is the instrument by which you experience this. This is how you learn how to read everything that's going on. Yeah. So, you know, if you're going to inhabit a body, you better learn how to work it. You better read the uh, user's guide, <laughs> which yeah, is exactly. experiences. And that's why, you know, I was just so blessed through martial arts to get that, you know, learning how to be very in tune with energies and learning how to manipulate them. And that was really a natural progression that led me to the spirit world. Otherwise, you know, I wouldn't have that groundedness. Yeah. And sometimes a lot of us who work with spirituality don't always have that strong foundation. And I'm very, very eternally grateful for that. And the breath work. Let's just talk about the breath work. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because that'll be from an anxiety attack like that. <laughs> you know, it's just anything like that. I mean, the moment you shift your breathing, you're shifting your energy because that's, you know, your breath work is the intake of energy. It's it's so important, the breath work. And, and again, I don't think people realize you know, even how shallow they are breathing. And they laugh at me when I go, come on. Like once you practice, you can roll that breath from your nose, third eye crown, down your spine, Absolutely. feel it going out your feet and back up in five seconds flat, be grounded and open. It's just Absolutely. Practice, right? Absolutely. And it's, it's nothing, you know, um, extraordinary. Like we can all do this. Yes. That is probably why it gets overlooked a lot, because I think when people are touching into the, uh, you know, when they get into the spirit world, when they get into the paranormal, they're thinking it's going to be extraordinary. And really all it is, is that the key to the extraordinary is the ordinary. Yeah. You know, you're just doing it extra. Yeah. So what we normally breathe at in an ordinary rhythm, extraordinary would be more mindful breathing. That's all it is. Yeah. And that's the key. It's just, it's right there. And we all have these things, but um, because probably because it's been, you know, something that we've always had the key to, we tend to overlook it when it's something that's right there. Yeah. And I, I um, how dismissive, our world can be and um, the guilt and shaming that can come oh my goodness. be projected out at us as well too when we are trying to honor our intuitive voice and uh, mm -hmm. shut people down really quickly too absolutely 
Absolutely. I'm really sorry, uh, Facebook user. If you head to StreamYard and give them permission to uh, use your name, if you would like, um, then we can uh, say thank you to you directly and say hi to you directly. But thank you for that comment. Childhood Claire stories are so validating. Love the Uncle Tony memory. Yeah, thank you. I still talk to him a lot. I still call him through a lot. I, I kind of look at him as my, um, my one of my guides because he was my first intro into the spirit world. And yeah, very, very special to me. So. I, um, I had my grandma. I find uh, a lot of us have a family member or somebody mm -hmm. that we are connected with. So it, it makes us feel safe to be vulnerable in connecting with energies that we may not recognize right away. Yes. It's that buffer place, right? Yes, absolutely. Well, you know, my, my grandmother too, that was a big one. She was actually the one who I would say um, really got me closer to the craft because um, she had, she was one teaching me how to set up my altar in my room. Although it was a very traditional, I mean, she was very Catholic, but I just noticed behind it you know just uh, and i always had that altar in my room and but there was just so much more to it than what she was doing and saying but you know she was old world italy so there was definitely some strega in there i'm telling oh no kidding <laughs> but i i find okay i don't want to get into a heavy religious conversation so, so this Absolutely. isn't going to be uh, you know mm -hmm. Yeah. Be mindful about <laughs> absolutely yeah i don't want to do but i i find a lot of um people with a catholic background are very intuitive and mm -hmm. uh, altar oriented and, and routine or structured towards intuition and yes. mythologies it's way way more than what maybe they would want to admit out loud probably yeah <laughs> yeah and it's just because it's so um, ritualized and everything. You know, put your hands this way, put your hands this way. So it's actually giving you a, a foundation yeah. of all of these things. Yeah. I so, agree. Anyway, I agree. But just leave it at that. Yes. <laughs> but I think that there's beauty in it. Like, I love visiting different churches, just the architecture and history and, and the beauty attached. To oh, them. I'm, I, let me tell you, I'm fascinated by religions. I will visit any denomination. I just absolutely love, you know, spirituality is beautiful. It, it really is. Right. And as long as um, we appreciate it, you know, and if there's something that you're just, okay, well, I can leave that one off to the side and I'm just going to focus on what I appreciate. And that's all. Yeah. <laughs> that's all we need to do. But that's <laughs> like so much of spirituality in general. We're going to resonate with different pieces based on where our sure. healing is at as well too, right? Like where we are yeah. in our healing journey. Uh, yeah. You know, it's... Um, oh, I'm sorry to cut you off. But nope. um, yeah, th there's something, it's so funny because I noticed when I um, was very deep into martial arts, it's structured similarly you know like like this style versus this style and this style and there's always this debate over which is which style is the best and it's very much like religion if you think about it it's because because they're all coming to the same thing it's just basically yeah. mastering uh trying to master your body as an instrument and getting the harmony of the body mind and spirit working as one that's really all right. it is so yeah, I'm having an aha moment as we're having this chat because one of my uh I have four children and um, one of my sons decided he wanted to do martial arts when he was four, but the age that they would take yeah. children was six. But I asked, could you please just let him, because he's just that kind of kid. He, Some are. He mm -hmm. observes, he listens, then he does what he's told, right? So yeah. they let him in, but that is also my kid who would astral travel at nighttime and have out of body experiences. He was no. the same kid. So I find it very fascinating that, you know, no. intuitively yeah. our bodies know what we need as well. See, too. That was, that was perfect because if he's astral traveling, the main thing he needs is he needs a physical grounding. So that was perfect. That yeah. was absolutely perfect. And uh, thank goodness for that. I mean, some children, I'm, I owned a school for 17 years myself and I was, you know, I specialized with uh, children with special needs oh. and I would, I would always say six because they'd been in a full day of school. So the attention span would be there, but there would always be special cases. And the ones that were special cases were very gifted psychically. Yeah. Very. Yeah. 
that's it's an interesting um yeah it's a very yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Really. yeah. observation yeah. um joan is just saying hi from kansas city i cry when i walk into churches it's very right. overwhelming to me with emotions absolutely yeah yeah I, um, even when I go on vacation, the first thing I want to do is go into like the cathedral or, or something. Yeah, that's just a feeling. Yeah. Yeah. I was in, um, I, we vacationed in old Montreal and they had some of the most gorgeous cathedrals up there I've ever seen. I so, have yet to go. Oh, you have to go. There was this one church there that was dedicated to um, Our Lady Star of the Sea. So oh. it was. Oh, it was beautiful. That would hook me right there, just the name yeah. of it. And she was just facing, and, and it had this huge statue on the top of the church, and she was just facing the water, going like this, and she had the crown of stars, and she looked just like Yamaya, you know, so she's out there like this. And when you went into the church, this was the one thing I was struck by, is because it was, um, it was supposedly the church for the sailors, the sailors would go there to um, pray before a journey or to express gratitude when they came back. So there was like little um, sailboats hanging, you know, little boats hanging from the top of the church and everything. And there wasn't one crucifix in the church. There was nothing but Mary's. It was built by a woman. The, it was, uh, oh, that's interesting. Uh, there was a, a St. Marguerite, uh, I can't remember, I think it was St. Marguerite Purifoy or something. And she collected the funds to have the church built. So it was a church built by a woman to honor Our Lady. And it Isn't was nothing but, yeah, and it was nothing but mothers holding children. That's That was the whole church. I have a confession because I've driven through Quebec to get to the oh. East Coast and stopped at all kinds of different antique mm -hmm. places and was horrified at the amount of um, crosses with bleeding Jesus on them in oh, yeah. <laughs> and pews. I'm like, I, I had no desire to stop at a church just in case there was more of that. <laughs> it just oh, yeah. That's why it was just so <laughs> fascinating with this church and, and it was that all feminine. It was like walking into a womb. It was just, it was beautiful. And, and I went in there and I was just sitting and, and praying. And then I guess they were doing some type of, uh, mass that night so they started rehearsing and then they start playing the organ and everything and she's sitting there just having the most amazing experience it was great that's beautiful yeah yeah it was just nice to see that um even in that you know in that area where you are seeing a lot of crucifixes everywhere and you are yeah. seeing that there was still a very feminine type of spirituality that was being honored there that's beautiful yeah you also have a background with massage therapy. I do. I do. Yeah. Um, that that was actually funny. Uh, <laughs> um, and I was uh, practicing Reiki. I started Reiki back in uh, 1996. And that was, at the time, it was very hard to find other practitioners. I mean, it wasn't, you know, not as easy as it is now anyway. And when I, when I believe when I started finally practicing, they told me, they said, well, you're either going to need um, to become an interfaith minister. So it will be considered faith healing, you know, just for, you know, just so you'll be able to offer it. Or you'd actually have to do something crazy, like get a license to touch like a massage therapist. So I could have <laughs> gone online <laughs> and become a wound in about 30 seconds. Right. But no, I decide to do two years of pre-med and get my license in massage therapy. <laughs> I, I just, I don't know. But I'm so glad I did because um, that was just the perfect, um, it was just the perfect transition from going from martial arts to massage therapy and everything. And then yeah. through with, and then pairing that with energy healing. So it, it all worked out very well. But um, yeah, I did that. Uh, I still do, I, I still do massage. I, um, I actually taught at the Hudson Valley School of Massage Therapy for about three years. Mm -hmm. I was a shiatsu instructor there. And um, yeah, it was, it was good. That was a good Did time. you find um, all of the hats interchangeable as well? Like would spirit come in when you were also oh, doing yeah. 
yeah. because I find with all the different hats that I have worn the same thing. Like it just mm -hmm. is a part of who you are. So there's like a flow. You can be clear about I'm on and I'm off, but it's still going to be there. Yes. Um, I, I actually had difficulty at first because I didn't realize this. I mean, I, I've always been very empathic, but the first time I laid hands on somebody, you know, I, usually Reiki, you're kind of, you're hovering and you're getting stuff. Yeah. But when you, when it's massage, you know, and I would always take a very long time to touch somebody because I got to move through those layers of the aura because they're just so palpable. Yeah. And then, I, and then when I finally laid my hands on, then, you know, I would get all this information at first. So I had to learn how to turn that off. So there was a special thing, like a uh, thing I would have to do. I would make sure that I was using a certain type of oil because it would just kind of trigger me to just, okay, you know, just be a little bit more defensive here because otherwise, um, you know, you're just, you're absorbing, you know, you're, you are massaging the person, but you're also getting that feedback through your hands constantly. So if you don't know how to shield, if you don't know how to ground, um, you know, and that really taught me if I didn't know how to do it before, boy, did I learn it then. Yeah. And yeah. So there, there were certain things like uh, it would help where I would massage with no shoes on because that would immediately put me in martial arts mind. You know, when my shoes come off, I'm like, boom, I'm right there. But yeah. there's other things, you know, that I would have to remember because, you know, you would be doing that. And then all of a sudden you'd be getting, oh, wow, well, I know what they had for lunch. I had blah, blah, blah. You know, it's just, it would be crazy the amount of yeah. beat you get. So. And, but I think that's part of it being, giving ourselves grace, giving ourselves grace Yes. to allow it to evolve in whatever way it's going to evolve that we don't have to compare our journey to somebody else's we can just let oh, it yeah. be what it's needing to be yeah yeah i i honestly um i when i started massaging i because of the amount of information that i was getting access to I would, I'm sure you can't turn it up. <laughs> it's it's not like a, it really is like a radio though. You turn the volume up and down. It's, you can, you it's can. It's kind of there all the but time. But I, I remember it would just be such a, like, I would be so honored that the person would get on the table and everything. And then, and yeah, it would just be almost like a ceremonial thing for me yeah. doing a massage. So um, I, I was never one to work in a spa and do like 10 in a row or something like that. I had to go immediately into private practice and I just combined it with Reiki and, a, and aromatherapy, a few other things. And I immediately went that route. And I actually did very well right out of school um, for quite some time. Uh, so, and then, do you think uh, that people were drawn to that energy though? Like there is a different vibe so. when, you know, that we pull those people I think so sure. because all of my clients loved it. I mean, it was uh, it was interesting. I remember I uh, just by some leap of faith I ended up booking an office in the middle, and it was just I, I just found it just by chance, and it happened to be five minutes from where I lived. It was absolutely perfect, and right, I think it was three days after I had opened, they had a street fair, so I got a free tent because the office I was in the building, they gave you a free spot. So I had a spot there. I put my little chair out there for chair massage. And I just said that anybody who booked an appointment right. after the chair massage would get 10% off. And I had, by the end of that day, I had two months solid of appointments booked. Wow. And they were all really the type of clients like I, I I couldn't have asked for better. I really couldn't have asked for better. I was just so repeat and referrals. Yeah, that was it. And it was, uh, and after that, I never wanted for clients uh, because they were just, they would refer and somebody else would come or they would send other family members in. And that was just a, a great, great transition because I, I was very worried. I mean, you know, you went from one field where it's very different and I basically just, morphed into somebody else and yeah so i you know and a lot of people were like well what made you go for that when you were over here you know you were doing great over here why did you go over here and it was really the type of thing that um i kind of had to you know it's just that's just the way you know if you're going to grow that's what you have to do and i love that you had the confidence 
right off the hop to allow yourself to incorporate all the different modalities and whatever was feeling right for you in, in that moment with each individual client. Like yeah. you may have needed to do more Reiki on one person and not another or intuitively tapping into what kind of aromatherapy you're needing. Like you were really yeah. trusting your intuition early. I, you know, I was, um, I think it was just that I wasn't thinking. I was just, <laughs> that's how it works. I was just like, let's try this. Love and, it. And it was working and I was Love getting it. more. And it, it was really, whenever I think too much, yeah. it blows everything down. Swallow brain. But I was enjoying myself so much. And, and when you're enjoying yourself, you're like a magnet, you know, it's just when you're having a good time. And I, loved working with that. That was one of my very favorite things to do is just be one-on-one -on -one with a client for like an hour and just get them to the point where they're so relaxed and everything. And then you're just kind of reading their body and what they need. And, and they're just allowing you to do. And the thing is, is I, I would have different massages that I offer, but then there was this one and I just called it a holistic massage and I listed everything that was in it. And they always picked that one. They never looked at the other ones. I don't think I ever did a conventional massage. And I kept showing them the menu. And the 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 holistic one was the last one. And they would always go, that's the one I want. And it was, and I think that it was an hour and 15 minutes long because it gave me enough time to just kind of do everything. And then I would even, um, I would give them a little aura analysis at the end, the whole thing. That's awesome. And they loved it. They loved it. Um, Let's see what I'm, yeah. So we just have somebody comment. I'm really sorry that I don't know uh, that your name is not showing up, but we've got you up on the screen. I can see the connection between Reiki and massage. I know I use the energy transfer between me and my patient when I was at work without even knowing I was doing it. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And I find, um, so I find Reiki is one of those things that people gravitate to. Yeah. when they're first kind of opening up and becoming a little more consciously aware. Crystals. Yes. Crystals, you know, sage. Oracle cards. Yeah, <laughs> oracle cards. It's that those are uh, yeah. kind of like the, the spiritual safe zones there. It's, well, <laughs> it's, it's the, yeah, it's the stick gateway. your toe in a little bit yeah. and see where yeah. you go. But I found, I took Reiki 1, just I just did my level mm -hmm. 1, mm -hmm. um, because in my head at the time, I felt that I needed a piece of paper that said I had right. some sort of credential. And I was not a good Reiki student. <laughs> I was not a good Reiki student. Because at the time, it was it was quite a while ago too. It was, um, I think it was, yes, uh, 17, 16, 17 years ago. And yeah. Um, yeah. she was, you know, doing her, uh, spiel yeah. saying, you know, you may not, uh, probably shouldn't drink coffee, have alcohol, don't eat red meat, don't do any of this stuff for 20 oh, days. Lord. And I'm like, Oh, I don't think I'm, I'm not good for no. this. <laughs> I'm not going to be good for this. And then, <laughs> um, she said something about like eating meat. And I said, I don't want to get into this conversation too heavily no. either at the time, but I'm like, but if you just said everybody has, everybody knows intuitively or on a soul yes. level that they have a purpose. If I'm choosing mindfully where I'm uh -huh. choosing this, this meat. And I, mm -hmm. I grew up on a farm, so I knew right. all those so animals. You know. <laughs> and yeah, I, you know. I have this gratitude and she's, she's the, like, I don't think I can talk to you. And she turned around and left the <laughs> And then when we were doing our practice, yeah, people like literally spirit started hovering all in the room. Curtains moved. She got freaked out. Said, "I don't talk to spirits. Can you deal with this?" Because I did, and then I dealt with all the spirits. So that wow. was my Reiki. That was my Reiki experience. But I mean, 17, 16, 17 years later, I understand that the different mm -hmm. healing modalities are just presented in different ways. And it's all oh, the yeah. same thing coming from that collective consciousness of one and depending on your intention, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, I you know how many Reiki teachers I got yelled at? Because, see, I learned it originally because Reiki, it's a Japanese healing art. So it really came through. I don't think a lot of people realize this. That's a lot of the... There's a martial artist. 
So we were a lot more hardcore, like, you know, basically like, you know, you've got somebody on there and you're, you're trying to calm them down because they got blasted at a tournament and, you know, they're, they're holding like an organ in their hand or something, you know, that's the way I was like, I learning it. All right. But, you know, I, and I learned Reiki one from another martial arts master. And then it took me right. 10 years to get my Reiki master because either the teacher could not work with me for whatever reason. Um, they just decided they couldn't work with me for very similar reasons that you're telling me, or uh, they moved or they just decided they didn't want to do it anymore. But I learned it from so many different types of teachers that every time I learned it, it was completely different. I learned it from one person who had um, taken Native American Apache survival courses and they taught me something. So that was pretty amazing. So yeah. they, they had me going out and working with like connecting with plants and doing it with that. Oh, then I had yeah, then I had somebody else who was very focused on crystals and they told me that. So it was just everything that was um, basically, I was taught every time a teacher dropped away, I was like, oh, well, that's okay because I'll probably get something really cool for the next one. Yeah. And then by the time I finally got it. So when I teach Reiki, everybody always says, you're not like a regular Reiki teacher because I'm like, <laughs> you got to do it like this and like this. So I don't even really call it Reiki anymore because, you know, I do and I don't. I call it Reiki so people can recognize it. But right. really, really Reiki, it's just universal healing ray. That's what it is. So, yeah. I mean, you know, just everybody teaches it differently. And if, but if you're a purist, don't come to me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the same. I'm the same. In my writing manual is like, I wrote it's like this thick, it's ridiculous. Yeah. I, but I love, not that I, it's not about attention seeking being outside of the box, but that eclectic mix just feels right for me too. It exactly. does. Because exactly. there's so many different sources and we're pulled to so many different things that mm -hmm. how yeah, I deny anymore. and not look at one thing. It just yeah, feels yeah, too rigid can. that way. You can't, um, because then you're not even allowing to be yourself. I mean, the whole yeah. idea is like, if let's just say, okay, I learned Reiki and I have it from all these others. So I'm going to pack it all in this, these experiences and give them to my student. Then my student is going to take that, have a bunch of other experiences, pack that together and give that to the next student. So it keeps expanding. That's the idea. Yeah. So, you know, it should be. yeah, that's why some people, when they're learning it, well, this is exactly the way it was taught by, you know, Mrs. Takata and that's all you should do. No. No, I, I don't. I'm not saying that's wrong, but I'm just saying that for me, I couldn't do that because there's just too much going on in here. That's all. <laughs> just... I've always had that opinion that a book that has been written mm -hmm. uh, was downloaded. That information was what it was at that point in time. And we are now in this space. And Correct. so if we are feeling pulled to add something to it, we're we're contributing to that evolution is yeah, absolutely so how can we ignore that yeah that's uh, i i honestly feel that's a responsibility yeah yeah i mean that's okay. that's evolution so we do so i just want to catch up on some hellos and some questions if we can so kathy is saying the spirits come through during reiki is it because of your energy or the energy of the client yes <laughs> 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 it can be both, yeah. It can be both. Um, me What's ever in the highest good in that moment, right? Correct. Yeah. Um, me personally, like, well, uh, what I will do is if I'm if I'm working on a client, I will ask my guides to come through and help me during the session. So I always do that prior. So when they do come in, I'm just going to make sure you know the for the highest good of uh, this particular client, you know, just send me the proper guides and also let me help me connect to their guides yeah so, so um yeah i would say like when i'm doing any type of healing session the room's pretty full by the time they the client gets there yeah yeah um, but with the proper intention you know i just i'm not gonna open up the floor to just any <laughs> yeah um can Kim Stewart is saying hello. Hi, Kim. She's saying welcome, Melissa. Thank you. <laughs> hello. Hello, James. It's okay that you're a little bit late. I'm glad that you're here. Um, hi, Michelle. And Richard is just asking a question as well, too. You ever worked in, I, in IET? Uh, not yet. Not yet, but I'm working on that. That's the next one. So that was, uh, that was great, Richard. Yeah. 
I'm looking into. That's the next one I want to add. Um, I've done, uh, I've got therapeutic touch. I've got, um, there's, you know, definitely Native American healing. Um, let's see what else. Well, then there's also the, um, you know, in addition to the Reiki, then there's also alchemical healing. Um, goodness, yeah, I should I should have brought it all in front of me, but I, I, I went on a journey for about 10 years to try to just kind of, you know, from basically from when I started learning till by the time that I was finally given my Reiki master, I had basically tapped into everything. Um, I have done IET, but I've only done level one. Mm -hmm. So very similar experience learning Thank you. Oh, yes so Rhonda is actually going to be my guest next week oh wonderful yeah yeah so i'm super stoked about having Rhonda come on so we can talk about reiki again next week too yeah my favorite reiki experience though i was uh only up to uh, i was still a practitioner i wasn't a master yet and they were actually having a seminar on reiki at a Catholic church. And I said, oh, I gotta see this. <laughs> wow. Is, For some churches don't even do yoga. Nun. It was taught by a nun. <gasps> this was the greatest thing. So I, went to Catholic school, so I wanted to see this. I wanted to see what she was gonna say. And she came out and she had the habit on and everything. All she was missing was the ruler. And she went into this whole thing explaining what it was. I guess she had learned it way back when it was just first being introduced to the States and everything. So that's how long she'd known it. And, you know, everybody was listening and they're really puzzled. And then some man actually had the nerve to stand up and say, well, doesn't this conflict with, you know, the teachings of Jesus Christ? And she just went, young men, do I look like I would ever do anything that was in conflict with the teachings of Jesus Christ? <laughs> Good and for her. Down, silent. Oh, it was great. And I was just sitting there like, yeah. <laughs> so then she actually called up anybody who was a Reiki practitioner to um, put a chair out in front of them and offer to do like a group healing for some people in the audience mm -hmm. so they could experience it. And um, that was probably one of the most powerful experiences I've ever had. That's amazing. Because yeah. those of us that are in this place of, 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 of in what we do, understand yeah. that it's, it's coming through us. We are not. Right, right. It's coming through us. And if, and if we look mm -hmm. at that, that's what Jesus did too, let it go through him. Exactly. Yeah, just what any any of us are really called to do. And that's our job here. Just yeah. to be the conductor between heaven and you know heaven that's and earth. So Con let's see. Connie uh, Contessa's just asking, do you feel drained after working on a client? If I don't listen to myself, yes. Okay, because um, it's not from working on the client, but if I am not practicing self-care, if I have not been working on myself enough, if I am not giving myself enough time, it, that's the only time I'm going to start to feel drained. Um, just the work itself doesn't do it, but me not doing my own work properly, yes. So one of the things I, I didn't, Normally I have like huge pages of, of questions for people. I had little words jotted down for us today. And one of the yeah. words was accountability. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's the thing. Well, that's why, you know, when uh, usually when you learn any type of energy work, they always say, you know, you have to start on yourself first. So if you haven't done that work, then you're not really ready to work on somebody else. And then you are going to get tired. You are going to, you know, these things are going to break down. And um, same thing, you know, with any type of practice, you have to learn how to build yourself up first. And if you don't, you never really learn how to work on somebody else because the hardest claim in the world is you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we have a responsibility to ourselves and to Absolutely. that collective consciousness, like to everybody else to have mm -hmm. accountability for our our thoughts, words, deeds, and actions, you know, all of it. Oh, our, yeah. In our girl. Yeah. Now, everything I, I mean, I always, uh, because I do this for a living, I, I just feel like I have to be my own example. You know, I have to yeah. be my own living example. So if I'm not healthy, if I'm not grounded, if I'm not prosperous, you know, all of these things, then, um, I really don't have the right in taking that energy that is not working and try to put that on somebody else. Yeah. 
or try to bring that to somebody else. So, and it'd be okay to say that we're still learning too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, yeah. We're always still learning. Oh yeah. And any client who comes to the door, they're just a reminder of something that you have not maybe been focused on enough. So yeah. I had, I was noticing, you know, whenever I get like a bunch of readings or healings and like group together in a row, there's usually like this common thread that connects all of them. And I kept noticing over and over again when I was working on, you know, whatever client I was doing a reading or something, I kept telling them, I said, you have to make time for you. You have to make time for you. You have to make time for you. So finally, when one of them left, I just looked up and I was like, all right, I get it. I get it. <laughs> right? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Because it was just basically they were going to keep coming in until I paid attention. You know, it was just, it's really just a message. And every time I was saying something in the back of my head, I'm just like, yeah, that's, that's great advice. And I could practically feel like my guides behind me going like that, <laughs> pointing at me, you know? Yeah. yeah. Terrible. So hysterical. Um, so same person is saying this, uh, this podcast is hitting all the areas of my life, joining martial arts, intuitive practices, learning about Reiki and healing. Oh, good. Oh, thank you, Michelle Plummer. So, okay. Oh, now, okay. now I know who's talking. Okay. And I good. love this. And you're right. You you are right in that middle of martial arts and intuitive practice. And like, I, I think that your light shines bright, Michelle. You know, I'm a fan. Mary Thomas, thank you for, for being here. <laughs> That's super cool, Brenda. I look forward to having uh, your session whenever that is. Thanks for booking in. It's um, it's um, there we go. It's a big journey. Like when we start on uh and on our healing journey and taking accountability. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of giggle when I see people tossing out like love and light to you and I love and light to you. And I'm on this, I'm like, oh, they just haven't really dug in yet because <laughs> it's raw and gritty and uncomfortable. Of course. Oh my God, are you kidding? I mean, everything is all, <laughs> it's all, mm -hmm. so, so, I mean, you know, the not to, I'm not criticizing anything. But no, I just know that, you know, my journey has always been like, I think people look at me now and they're just like, oh, you know, and they, and they, and they don't realize, I mean, you know, I was, you know, I, I started out my journey. I, I mean, at first, you know, just the age of seven, I was, you know, at one point I was prepared to go to sleep. But then by the time I was 11, you know, I'm there in, you know, basically a room with a bunch of men twice my size who were trying to scare me out of there because they didn't want me to slow down the rest of the class. So I was basically getting beat up on by professionals. <laughs> and and it wasn't even my idea. My mother signed me up. She was just like, well, you're too much in your own head. And, you know, because I just used to put on the headphones in my room and trance out and just draw and write and everything. And I know now that I was channeling yeah. and it was all automatic writing and messages and everything. And I would come out and I would be a little out of it. And I think that my mother just intuitively knew that I needed something to ground me. Yeah. And, you know, we tried dance and um, I actually had to stop at one point because um, this is actually funny. Um, I was actually quite good at ballet, but they pulled me aside at one point and they said, you've gone as far as you can go. You can't go any further because you can't go up on point. You have flat feet. Oh. Yeah. And at that time, they said, you have bad feet. You can't, you can never go up on point. Uh, however, flat feet is very good for martial arts because you're hitting them with the whole bottom of your foot. <laughs> so I taught, and, I taught dancing forever. I started dancing when I was four and I taught till I was like six months pregnant with my second son. I taught uh, forever. I loved it. And I remember the teacher actually cried when she told me because it was just something where I, I was just, loved it. You know, I just picked it up. They showed it to me one time. I had it. 
Um, and then she just put me off to the side and everything because she knew I already had it. I could basically watch any routine once and it, it was there. Mm -hmm. And I loved it. And, you know, I just loved moving with the music and everything. And and she did. She cried because she said, I would I would love to put you in, but you, you, know, you do you have bad feet. I mean, you don't even have an arch. Um, yeah. But I think that was basically the universe's way of telling me to stay grounded. Yeah. I mean, my flat feet. And um, that was just something to always remind me. And that was basically what gave me that type of powerful grounding. Because, I mean, you know, I love dance so much that I was just like, I was out in the heavens when I was doing that. Yeah. So that was not for me as grounding because it was just too. You know, so do you find music? Oh, puts you can pull you into that space really fast now like if Absolutely. i have to do any writing or any i find that oh, yeah. right tone and play the same song on a loop for three hours till I'm i done. do that too oh god that thank god somebody else does that yeah <laughs> that used to drive my parents nuts that drives yeah. me nuts. i always have to have headphones on because i could just sit there and loop the song and then i'm just gone yeah and yeah it just takes me away and i think that's why i love dance so much yeah. And that's why, you know, when I'm really working out, you know, the music has to be there. It has to come on. And there's certain songs that it's just like you put it on and I'm just right there. And and I would have this playlist that I would play prior awesome. to at the tournaments and everything, get me all psyched up. Yeah. It puts you in that non-thinking space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's but exactly still very it. connected to your body. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it has to be there. And that's why um music so, so important. So that's a good question. Angela is just asking where are you both from? So oh. you go well, first. I, I am from Hudson Valley, New York. And um, right now I'm, I live in Sugarloaf, which is a nice little arts and crafts village. And I have a shop, you know, I live over my shop. And I have another shop in Warwick, which is the next town. Can you tell them about your shop? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Sugarloaf is uh, just like a, this magical little town. And it's got wooden sidewalks. And um, it's got all of these houses where the shop's in the front and the shopkeeper lives over the shop. And it started out, it was all handmade. So there's like a candle guy who's been here for 50 years. There's leather worker. There's somebody who makes soap. There's so on and so forth. And I'm the resident witch. So my house is purple. <laughs> yeah. And, and I just, I, I love it here. I've wanted to, Sugarloaf has been around for probably they started late sixties, early seventies. It kind of started out as uh, just an artist project and it, and it just kind of grew and it became very popular. And I used to love coming here as a kid. And I would always say one day I'm going to own a house here and I'm going to have a shop. I don't know what kind it is. It's going to be, but I'm going to have a shop. Right. And yeah, it took me almost 40 years to do it, but I did it. And so, But I, I mean, if your intuition knew, there's no time there. No, there's not. It's, it's nothing. I mean, and it was the perfect timing too, because, you know, it wasn't until, you know, I got married. I was, and my husband also likes that, you know, he, he's, he's got a very, um, intuitive mind. He's not a natural magician, everything, but he is a, um, you know, he's a photographer. He's very into the law of attraction and he's just, his whole idea with just seeing it in his mind and just manifesting it into reality. You know, when the two of us came together, it just, we had to open something up together. So, but what do you, oh, oh, God bless you. No, I'm 51, hon. Thank you. Though. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny that you said that you're old, Dur, like when we're yeah. having this conversation, and because yeah. I'm older than you, because <laughs> I'm 52 <laughs> and a grandma, but barely. You know what? barely. My, <laughs> my granddaughter doesn't call me grandma, she calls me Queenie, so it just feels a go. lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun for sure. Uh, let me tell you, I didn't, I don't think I really started having fun until I hit 40. I think that's when I just really started. Yeah. Sure. I think up until then, it was just, um. I was still trying to hit my stride and everything, but I got around 40, 41, and, and that's when everything really started to get very enjoyable. And there is something to be said, you know, John Lennon with the Life Begins at 40, he was onto something. Oh, uh, yeah. I think for sure, 
just even the the confidence and clarity with the yeah. intuitive voice um Absolutely. and then within you within your body and whatever changes come with age and yeah the all, only thing i that, miss right? the only thing i miss is my metabolism that's it yeah that's a, yeah that's a real thing yeah yeah <laughs> and and the hot flashes aren't the most fun but otherwise you know i just i it's um it's worth it you know it's a power surge that's it's a dragon moment that's right yes that's how <laughs> i look at it dragon moment. i love that i'm using it <laughs> you totally can yeah, right. yeah. it's a dragon moment yeah. um <laughs> Angela, I'm from Northern Ontario, Canada originally, and I'm currently outside of uh, Toronto in a city called Guelph. So that's oh. that's where I am. I used to compete a lot in Toronto. But that was back in like the early 2000s, no, late 90s, early 2000s. So. God, I, that was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, I didn't move to Southern Ontario until I think, well, yeah, it was 2000. Yeah. It was 2000. Beautiful here. Oh my God, loved it. Up there. Yes, and yes, it does. Yes, it does. Sage tea. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So what? fun. Um, where was I gonna go next? I think so. Oh, I I just had so many different things, so many different areas I wanted to go to. Do, who do you find gets pulled into your store like what kind do they know uh, what they're seeking is it a pull and they know. don't know why they're there but then yeah. they it's that aha okay now i understand why i came in yeah i i think it has a lot to do with um we didn't just when we named the shop and because there was so many things coming into it you know i had my husband's photography in there so we we're going to have this whole section with the art i was doing the healing practice we had the, um, you know, the products that we made. We were making our own candles. We we're making our own oils. Everything, and all of that. Trying to figure out how to put all of that together under one roof, uh, and what do you call that? So we decided, you know, to call it a curiosity shop. So it worked out very good because everybody who always comes in and goes, I'm curious, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> they like it, and usually they're just they're drawn to it, or their friend told them they they had to come here. And they're not even sure what they're seeking necessarily, but uh, they don't even know if they want a reading, but they just, they know they want some type of session or they, they just want to come in. They, they just feel very drawn. Right. Um, it's interesting because I always feel like my house is kind of like platform nine and three quarters. Only certain people can see it. So, but every dog can. People will be walking their dogs and the dog always tries to go. <laughs> It's the best thing. So that's how I know I'm doing something right. Like some people see Purple House and they'll be like this, trying to go past my house. You know, they'll cross the street because they don't want to go past the house. But the dog is trying to get up the steps. And that's- Always uh, trust the animals. Animals know. Oh, cats sleep on my porch, everything. You know, I just, uh, there's a lot of people in the neighborhood. They just let their cats run wild. They're always sleeping on my porch. All the dogs are trying to get in. So there's there's got to be something there. The people are- afraid to come in i know that you know that i still have i i just waiting for the right client that's all and anybody who's afraid to come in is not the person i would want i'm sorry that's that's fun contessa that you're watching that right now in the background sorry <laughs> no it's all good actually we just had somebody saying Watching that right now, I have to close <laughs> my background. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just something about that. It's that only the people who are supposed to see it see it, uh, which is what I want because I don't really want anybody coming in who's you know not going to be comfortable. You know, I don't need. Plus, it's especially in Sugarloaf. That one is my house, so that's especially important that anybody who comes to the through the door has to have like proper intentions because you're bringing it into my home. I uh, do you encourage people. I encourage people to do that. I mean, yeah. bless your doors or set your Absolutely. intention with your door that, you know, only those mm -hmm. people that are at the same vibrational level or above, or, Absolutely. you know, contributing in that same vibrational space or above feel welcome in your space. And it's super interesting. Who feels like stands yeah. at the door and shuffles. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All the time, all yeah. the time. So I will do that, you know, I, I definitely do that 
very much so at uh, the Sugarloaf location. Warwick is um, because that is just a store. It's also much bigger than the Sugarloaf one. And um, when I started in Warwick, because it's a much busier town, that was interesting. I wasn't sure if I was going to be accepted in there because, you know, it just, it's a very, it's a beautiful area, but it's kind of like a, an old fashioned village. And there hadn't been any shop, any metaphysical shop at all. It was actually, there's, it's all privately owned shops and everything, but they all are either boutiques or they look like home goods places. And there's me, bam, right in the middle. <laughs> uh, they loved it. They loved it. Everybody kept coming in and saying, this is exactly what this town needed. And, and that was so nice. Oh, I, that's lovely. It was wonderful. And just people just love to come in, hang out. There was an old man who came in and he sat on the back couch and it was during a street fair that we were having. And he just kept sitting on the couch and looking around and laughing and giggling. And he goes, I don't know why, but I just feel so good here. And oh, I and he's so laughing and he says, I hope you don't mind that I'm sitting here. And I said, no, you stay right there because you're contributing yeah. to the good feeling. You know? yeah, and that's awesome. Yeah. And it's so nice because that's what people do when they come into my shop. And that's why it's always going to be a platform nine and three quarters, because I don't want the ones who aren't going to let them do that coming in. <laughs> you know, I don't want them coming in and wrecking the energy. So if there's. 20 people that walk by, but only two of them make it into the shop. That's fine. It's perfectly fine. And, and those people tend to stay. Like they recognize, oh. they recognize it and they tend to stay and it just sort of unfolds. It unfolds yeah. from, from yeah. there. Well, plus I'm, I'm already, um, I'm expanding in Warwick, actually. I'm about to open up a shop. Um, I had to rent a bigger space. So right after Christmas, we closed down the location we have and we're moving up the street to a shop with two floors. It's actually going to turn into almost like, wow. you know, yeah, like a department store type of thing where I'm going to have the basically the workshop in there where we make all the candles be on the one side, the shop will be right. on the other. So you'll actually be able to see everything being made, see the intention being put in. The I classes see. will be upstairs. The healing space will be upstairs. Yeah everything is going to be under one roof. So that's going to be very helpful. And I, I, do you find, I guess when people are seeking good, there's, um, they may not know what they're looking for right away and then it unfolds. Mm -hmm. I know for me, people are coming at first uh, for the mediumship aspect, right? That's definitely yes. what people are coming yes. for first yeah. with me, but it definitely yeah. evolves and, and, and expands after that. Mm -hmm. Um, and that that witchy side, like I always get excited when I get to show that that side or pull somebody else into to my yeah. world and go, okay, let's oh yeah. yeah, let's get you moving. And it's always when um like when people are feeling stuck and they're caught in that loop of energy that's creating their own blocks and disease, and they don't know how to channel it in a different direction and yes. how much you know, they can do that um, yes. and be powerful in their own journey. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah that's, that's why I think um, I'm so excited about this new place getting ready because if they don't know what they want, there's all these different areas that they can go. You know, so um, another one that I get um, when people come in, they think they want a reading but what they really want is healing or they say, you know, it's just something like that. But they, and it's funny because, you know, I'll have other people who work the shop with me and there's always somebody coming in looking specifically for me. So I, they might come into one shop and I'm in the other one and they will actually go over to the other one specifically looking for me. Okay. And then when they finally find me, they'll be like, okay, I've been looking for you. And I say, okay, well, what do you, what do you want? And then they go, I don't know. <laughs> and, so then I just kind of look at him. I said, um, I said, do you mind if I, you know, just kind of tap, tap in. into you and figure it out a little bit? And then, yeah, and that's, that's how it starts. Mm -hmm. So it's always like that. They always coming up to me. I don't know. I've had people come up to me in restaurants, same thing. I don't know why, but I feel like I need to talk to you. It's, it's been happening probably oh, most of my life, most of my life. So do you put a hat on and go, maybe I'm just going to dim my light today? <laughs> my mother had a hat made for me. She took it to an embroiderer. She gave it to me one year for my birthday. 
And it was a little baseball cap, and it had a peanut with a magnet pulling it. Because she said I was a nut magnet. Like if there was going to be somebody coming out <laughs> and asking question, I was going to find it. And, and you know, and she she looked at it that way. It wasn't probably the best way of saying it, but she would always call me that a nut magnet. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, if something interesting was going to happen, it was going to be when I was there. <laughs> and uh, the people who have come up to me, it, it's just, um, I'm, it's pretty amazing. You know, I just, uh, I don't, I don't mind. I, I just, I always kind of have an idea when they're coming up to me, kind of what they want. But, and, you know, just whether or not they're going to be ready to go there, we have to figure that out. Yeah. That's that's yeah. the one thing. And then sometimes they come and they think they want mediumship when really what they need is to just kind of go within and do some internal work. Right. Yeah. And oh, uh, more and more people are at that place. Like more yes. and more people are ready for um, that accountability and taking yes. responsibility for their, for their journey and opening up more. Yeah, absolutely. Because I found a lot of people who want mediumship actually just want to connect with spirit not necessarily somebody in particular. They just, you know, they're thinking it's somebody who passed, but not realizing that it's just, they want to connect with spirit. They want to connect with their higher self sometimes, but they're, yet they're asking for mediumship because they want to ask these questions. And it's just like, well, if you really go within, those answers are, are in you. You just, yeah. you, know, you need to give yourself that space and grace. So, Contessa's just sharing. I have a large evil eye hanging on my front door. Well, I got one on behind. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do. I um, yeah. The the house is strongly warded. There's this stuff going on there. But um, I just had a, a conversation with a client about that. Like yeah. they were helping somebody paint. There was a, a couple that was separating, and they were going to be selling their space, and they were painting mm. everything. And I'm like, are they going to use some? chalk and draw some sigils on before they paint. Oh, yep. Oh yeah. <laughs> and just set your yeah. intention before you Oh, we paint. did that. We did yeah. that before um and it was funny because when we went to paint it, it was actually in um November. And everybody just told us is like you're crazy, you can't paint your house in November. It's too cold. And right around the time that we we're getting it painted, we had a heat wave that month. <laughs> So there was no problem getting painted. So I was out there in my shorts, like in November, drawing sigils around the side of the house before they painted. Yeah, I was yeah. doing it all. And um, everywhere, you know, on the porch, because we had them paint the porch, we had them paint everything. It was, um, when we first bought the house, it was kind of like this uh, gray, um, which made it a good base for the purple and everything. But it just, um, what a difference though. And I remember, like, as soon as it was painted, all of the neighbors stopped talking to us. <laughs> Really? You would have thought that it felt like life was breathing into it or it was breathing well, with life, you know? Well, that. it's a, it's a surprise. I think that uh, there was, there was a lot of people at the time who were very set in their ways, but the, since then, and there's been like some more people moving in, kind of bringing some new blood in there and everything. I think we kind of uh, started that when we came in, we were one of the first ones to come in that actually lived there. A lot of people, um, when Sugarloaf had first started, it was everybody, it was live work. And then little by little, the house is sold. Um, there are people just renting the shops or, or maybe just living there and turning it into a residence. And it was just kind of slowing up, but we came in and we were another live work and we, we meant it. And when we started doing that, the people who were just renting, I think they were just looking at us like, you know, yeah, we, you know, you don't know what it's like here. We've been here and you haven't. And um, eventually, little by little, all the renters left, the houses went up for sale, and then people started buying them and then opening shops. Oh, so yeah. it's starting to shift back into that. And the people who are coming in never knew the house was any other color. So it kind of worked out good. I think it was just like bringing in the purple just kind of worked as a purge in the area That's so funny and created and a new community it did it did and the guy but the guy across the street though that was interesting because he was the one who'd been there the longest he was the candle maker and he's a, like this old hippie who comes out and he's always like leaving little candles on everybody's doorstep as gifts and everything and he came out and he's like i love the color i made a candle that matches your house and he gave us <laughs> a candle Oh, he was great, you know, and he's out there like going like this in front of the house, you know, because he's just this old 
you know, um, just this uh, basically super cool, real hardcore hippie guy. That's and awesome. he's just done nothing but make candles for the past 50 years and drive around in his uh, like little classic car. And he just has a great time. So fun. And yeah, and he just loves anything we do because it reminds him of him when he was young and he gets just such a kick out of it. So yeah. That, oh, it is. It's very magical. <laughs> so yeah. That's awesome. If you are just tuning in, you are listening to Spirit Switchboard. We are here live on the United Public Radio Network and the UFO Paranormal Radio Network, 105.3 and 107.7, New Orleans. Um, maybe we should uh, just, maybe there are some people that are listening that don't know what sigils are. Maybe we need ah, to back, backtrack just yeah. a wee bit and Good you know point. not exclude anybody from the conversation. Do you want to talk a little bit about... Well, the way I use sigils, I, I basically, I work with runes. That's the way I've been doing it for um, most of my life is that uh, I, I started in with that. My um, <laughs> my brother got me started on that, I should say. Uh, <laughs> That's fascinating. Is there a story yeah. to that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. See, my brother growing up was very into Thor. Okay, very okay. into the comic books back in the day. And he was one of those where he gets, when he gets really into something, he started reading up on the mythology and he got very into it to the point where he was like reading up on the Satra and everything. So he's, he was getting into it. And so he started, he bought a set of runes and he was pulling them every day, but he, he wasn't liking what he was getting. So one day he just got mad. He just threw them at me. He goes, you took them, right? So I took them and that was the beginning of me. I, I, so I've been reading runes since I was about 15. So mm -hmm. when I work with sigils, I use runes because they are, you know, it's a, first off, let's just go, it's an old Germanic, uh, like a Viking alphabet. And the runes, that's really my main form of reading is I do, um, I, I do a combo of runes and sometimes I'll bring in like tarot or oracle with it, but mostly it's runes. And I think the reason I like working with them so much is because they're so versatile and they do become sigils, especially if you combine them. If you start putting two runes right. together and everything, you can create um, your own unique messages and um, intentions. So the whole idea with a sigil is it's basically, um, at least the way I, I say it is it's, um, it's an intention in a symbol. And so you basically are creating that. I mean, that's even comes from, um, back from like say the hex signs pennsylvania dutch all of that so it's a, a sigil is basically a symbol that you create with a specific intention so i and i'm doing them all the time you know with runes i'm stirring them into my food um i'm always you know the chalk's always out it's going underneath my you know my yeah. front mat front house um if i if ever i'm going to paint something or you know whatever i, I even when i'm shampooing my head practically I'm doing stuff like that. I'm so like, underneath our so water cool. tap. Yes. It's yes. underneath our water tap. We have a sigil. Yes. Thing. There you go. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. I mean, just like whenever we have something installed and, oh, I've got some access, I'm doing that. You know, there's one uh, underneath the bathtub. There's one, you know, just uh, there's always something. You know, if something new comes into the house, of course, I'm going to be doing a sigil on it. You know, it just, it's just basically a way of um, branding yourself really, if you think about it. And that's something that is really important when it comes to the home, I think, because that's just an extension of your body, you know, and it's the same thing, you know, if I'm doing, you know, if, if even if I'm just taking out an oil or something like that and I'm applying it, I'm not just doing this, I'm actually drawing it with a symbol. So I'll be doing like intentions up my arm. And everything. Yeah. And I've done that when I've massaged people, I've actually done healing sigils right in there. And uh, sigils is actually, that's the basis of uh, Reiki. They use symbols also. Yeah. So it's all over the place. Yeah. And you can, and creating your own in whatever mm -hmm. way feels right for you. It's about, oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it really is about your intention and it helps you have that focus and, and shifting and moving your energy, like really connecting to Absolutely. your energy and yeah, I don't know, moving that power from you. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of times I remember back in the day when I used to um, have the headset on and I'd be drawing. I didn't even know what I was drawing. 
but they were all sigils. They were really oh. obviously downloading sigils, symbols, you know, just um, anything I could think of that was just- They weren't just doodles. No, they definitely weren't doodles. Because, you know, I, I saved a lot of them, you know, and I'd look back and I'd go, my God. I, mean, I remember one time I was just, um, years later, I looked at it and I was like, oh, look at that. I did two two of the Reiki symbols are right here. I didn't even know that one. Like I had <laughs> Seiji and uh, Shukurei were both there and I, I had drawn them like years before I even knew what the heck they were. So right. yeah, we're just, that's, they're all coming in from the same, you know, basically collective. So what 80s song were you listening to when those channel? <laughs> Do you know? Do you remember? What song you right. listening to? I'm trying to think of what I used to. Um, let's see. Uh, I've I can't a lot. But if you remember, you are even. I might. I, I'm. I'd have to think about it for a second, but I, I used to, I, I used to put so many things on loop. On a loop. And mm. yeah. And Did there's I that one. And some of them are, are silly, like when people, like when I tell them and everything, they'll be like, really? You that one and everything? Um, uh, For me, it's different songs depending on depending what on it is song. that I'm working on, too. Yeah. There was this one song. Oh, okay. I do remember one of them that I did a lot of sigils to, and it's the silliest song, but it was New Edition, and the song was called Once in a Lifetime Groove. And there was something about it. It had this opening that, dun, 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 and, and I just get in that. And, and it was funny because it was one of the few that had lyrics, because usually I'm not good with when they're singing, it distracts me. So I just need sometimes a background. But I remember that yeah. one for some reason, I would get into that rhythm and then, and it just went on loop. And my mother, I can't stay. So I'm to yeah, I'm so <laughs> and, and so, man, you know, I remember like uh, this was before, you know, this was, I had just got my very first boom box, but I did not have headset yet. Th right. That wasn't really, you know, I remember when Walkmans came out, that's how much of a dinosaur, you know, we're talking here. So yes. I, I was lucky, you know, my mother got me a Walkman right away because she just, so she wouldn't have to hear that stuff anymore. But, so <laughs> but it was uh, that one for some reason, I don't know why when that one came out, it was the intro because it was like, and it had a very long intro. It was one of the first songs that when they had the long version and the short version, yeah. that one had a very long opening. And I, sometimes I would just stop and I would rewind it before he'd start singing and I would just keep listening to the intro. Yes. It, it, it's, um, yeah, it was just this part. You into a space. Part. Yeah. It was that part because as soon as he opened his mouth, I was like, no, 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 no. And then I would rewind it and then just boom again. Um, there was another one that always was very good was, um, you know, anything Van Morrison into the mystic was always very easy. That was just boom. I was just gone. Um, but then there was a live version of Caravan where he just went on and on and on with that la, 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 la. And it just, and it went on and on and on. And I was just yeah. like, go on, you know, I could be gone with stuff like that. But there was, there was so many, I just, I'll remember more when I'm not thinking about it, but there, so I could basically so thank you get, for sharing those ones. Find, I could find something anywhere. But, and yeah. for me, the music doesn't have to be one particular genre either. No. It's like across the board, all kinds of different things. That's why people look at my playlist and go, "What? What is wrong with you?" <laughs> they don't know. They're like, you, "You can't make up your mind here." You know, you've got you're you're over here, and then you got hard rock and everything. One that's very easy when I'm always going Zeppelin. You know, anything Zeppelin, of course. And boom, there it is. And um, that one I would listen to a lot, and then I would, and then I would turn around and do the intro to New Edition for like an hour. And oh, my mother, she just, I felt bad for her. <laughs> I just, you know, I mean, but it it's great for, that she understood what you needed and supported yeah. who you yeah. were. Oh, she, I was lucky. She was the one who signed me up for martial arts. Um, I don't even know if she knew what I was. I mean, she always kind of, you know, she, she always said there was just things about me that just always surprised her when he, when. I was a kid and that just kind of let her know right from the beginning, you're dealing with something very unusual here. Right. So, you know, because I never learned how to read. I already knew how to read. Yeah. She, she says, she swears 
that when I wasn't even two years old, she had me on her lap and she was reading the Reader's Digest and I started reading the words to her. Isn't that wild? So I have one kiddo that was, he didn't talk till he was over three. And then yeah. as soon as he started talking, but he was like telling you how the Titanic sunk and oh, yeah. how your kidneys function. And it was, it was wild, you mm -hmm. know, and, and reading. And when I thought, cause I tried testing him too. I'm like, yeah. I need you to read this from the back to the front. Yes. <laughs> Yes. So, and he did. Yeah. And he did. He is, he is brilliant, like, and very intuitive. But for me, that path of mm -hmm. um, coming out of that witchy boo closet mm -hmm. was really the drive at the beginning for me was supporting my children who were having such intense experiences that I wanted to lay a foundation within Absolutely. our home and Beautiful. outside for other people, like yeah. children, in supporting children. Yeah, it's so important. I mean, really. very important to validate their experience, even if as an adult, you are not having the same experience as them. Exactly. Which was, that was the case with my mother. And the funny thing is, is my mother's crazy intuitive, but she doesn't think she is. So basically <laughs> all of her instincts, just she put them on to me instead of like using them for herself. She's so intuitive. I mean, she, she knew everything. She would always be like, yeah. well, someone's always going to do that. She would always be right every yeah. single time, you know, just ridiculously clairvoyant but never, and would have dreams all the time and would never believe any of them, never believe <laughs> them, but you know, but she always knew like if something was going on with the kids, she knew what to do. She knew what to say. She, yeah. she really but sometimes when you write it, like, well, when you say it, you claim it, but when you write it, you're tricking your true. ego into believing what you, your intuition already knows is true. True. Like, you know, so True. sometimes people, it's really important that they journal it out because it's the only way that they're going to shush the chihuahua brain down. Is, oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and that's another thing is, is she can write really well, too. It's just that with her, she's very like uh, kind of AD, ADD. She's all over. You know, she she can't stick with something for very long. I feel uh, she good. reads ridiculously fast and everything. So there's so many things that I, I think that uh, and I take after her in so many ways like that. But she made sure to ground me. She gave me what she didn't get when she was a kid. And I'm so grateful for that because, I mean, that's why she was just always watching me very closely. And if she thought something would help, even if it didn't, she had, she was trying. That's and, awesome. Yeah. And that's why, you know, she, she had me in the dance, you know, right away because, you know, it was, it was for me, it was really about the music. And, you know, then it was martial arts right away. And she, she dragged me into there. I thought she was crazy. I was, I did not want to go, but. <laughs> I, but she knew. It worked. It worked. Yeah. You know, she told me, she was like, just do it for a year. And you can, after, after a year, you can quit. That was always the thing. Every time she put me into something, you got to do it for a year. You got to commit for one year. And then after that, you can quit if you don't want to. Great. And then by the end of the year, I was like. Mm. And so, and, a master yeah. instructor. Yeah. Yeah. I was, uh, I think I might've been uh, definitely my style, but I don't know. I think maybe in general, I might've been the first female in New York state. I don't know. Wow. So I'm just going to share some of these, get us caught up a wee bit here. So, um, Contessa was saying, I have some work to do with sigiling. Thank you for this. Yeah. I'll take it up a notch. Um, hello, Ed. It's great that you are Hi. here. Ed has, uh, um, the Rift Nation. He actually, Rhonda and Ed have their podcast together. So Rhonda will be on next week. So he's shared, thank you for sharing to your group and to your page. Um, Ed is just asking what your bloodline or nationality is. Oh, okay. Um, I am exactly half and half, half Italian, half Puerto Rican. My mother's 100% Puerto Rican. My father's 100% Italian. Both of my grandparents, sets of grandparents immigrated. So both of my parents are, I guess, considered second generation or is that first generation? First I never generation. Get that. First generation here. So yeah, they're both first generation. Yeah. And the funny thing is, is all of us were born in the same hospital. My parents, both my parents and me were all born in Nyack Hospital. Oh, so I, then you're, yeah. yeah, so your parents would be first generation. Yeah, they're all first generation. Yeah. That's fascinating that you guys are all yeah. born in the same hospital. Yeah, I didn't know that until last year. I had no idea. <laughs> we were all Crazy the stuff we find out as we get older. Yeah, yeah. I, and it came out in casual conversation. I think it was because, oh, I know why it was. Um, I did, 
23 and me, uh-huh. right? Or, or, or that one. Yeah. And we got the results back, you know, because it usually tells you like if there's anything, any yeah. predispositions for anything. And it basically came back and they're like, there's nothing wrong with you. You haven't inherited it. <laughs> and it actually said something awesome. like, um, which is funny because I always grew up thinking I wasn't coordinated or anything. And I had to do martial arts because I wasn't good at anything else. And there was actually this one result that said that your body type is in the top 10% with the uh, elite athletes and everything. And I was like, really? <laughs> so I, I went home and I was basically, I went to visit my parents and I said, thank you. And they were like, for what? And I said, for awesome genetics. <laughs> <laughs> really? I mean, I, I and, I, and I was shown, I was like, look at this. I said, the only thing that I'm susceptible to is diabetes and I have low blood sugar. You know, that was basically it. That's so, um, which was I mean. awesome. And, um, and and totally unexpected. And then I had this whole epiphany that I wish I had known that whole thing about the um, the athletic uh, propensity because it's amazing how if you're told something, that sticks in your head. And I always thought that I wouldn't be good at sports. So I had to do something like dance or martial arts or something else because I was not, I was not an athletic person. And the funny thing is, is that I, the whole time, I actually was the perfect athlete. Isn't it fascinating? Like your body knew, but yeah, the body chihuahua knew, brain. But I didn't, you know, and that's why it's it. so important to hone the instrument because the body does know. Yeah. And, and that's why yeah. they would be telling me things like, um, you know, and doing it martial arts. And they're like, well, you can't do that. You're way too small to do that. And it's like, Man, but I did it. You know, I, I would do something, you know, you can't, you can't hit the bag that hard. But I did it, and um, and I was just doing it because they were telling me I couldn't. But right. I didn't know the whole time that my body was like, "You can do this. Of course, you can do this." <laughs> so that's so fascinating. Yeah. So Ed is just saying thank you for answering, Richard. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. And I guess, um, and that was the uh, one other thing that came up on the twenty three and Me's. I guess on uh, my mother's side, there's also very. Uh, there's a uh, native in there. So um, that's it, I think, but it's only about like 10%. But, right. But it is. We, uh, my mom lives nine hours away from, mm-hmm. from where I live. She's nine hours north and uh, had gone up in the summer for a family wedding. And my mom, uh, my sister was there as well. My mom gave us all of our Christmas presents early. She said, take them home. My sister mm-hmm. said, have you opened up your present yet? And I'm like, no, it's for Christmas. I'm waiting. I stuck it in the desk. This was like in the summertime. I'm like, I'm just waiting. Well, it's the like 23 and me. It's the ancestry. And my mom oh, has yeah. been bugging me steady. Have you done it yet? No, you gave it to me for Christmas. I'm holding out. <laughs> but my sister's done hers. My brother's done her. Like his already. Everybody's done them. But she's um, wow. very impatient with me to get that ripped open and <laughs> my swab done and sent. <laughs> I just, uh, I'm not sure. I'm ready to see what the results are going to be. Well, it's the. Oops. I don't know what just happened there. My apologies. It's all good. It's it's all good. We got a little bit of a loop happening. Oh, goodness. Okay. Um, You know, I wonder if that has anything to do with. Okay. Um, I just learned about this one and I don't know if um, you know anything about this. I just found this one out not too long ago, what a slider is. I don't. You don't know either. I just found this out. Okay. So apparently a slider, and this is something that I've had issue with all my life as well, affects electronic equipment. And it's something that was discovered. It's actually a paranormal phenomenon. I, I, I have not been able to wear a watch because if I wear a watch for any length of time, I'll either drain the battery or it'll go yes. back. You're a slider. Okay. And this is something I didn't know what it was. And I finally looked it up. And apparently uh, Nikola Tesla, his secretary was a slider. And he had to make sure that whenever he did any experiments, she was on the other side of the building because she would affect the you know whatever he was working on yeah. and they have a tendency they can you know you can make lights flicker um you're just affected by certain electronics that's why i, I have a tendency there's certain types of iphone i oh yeah <laughs> yes you don't work otherwise no. and everything. 
And yeah, this is actually a thing. I've even walked past cars and heard them unlock. Nobody's been in the car. So mm -hmm. if, you know, if I ever wanted to like entertain a life of crime, I probably could, but I would never do that. Right, but, right. You know, but it's actually a thing called a slider and it stands, uh, I believe it's, I'm trying to remember what it stands for, but it's just, uh, it's somebody who affects the, um, who is affected by electronics and something like sub, let me see if I can find it. But, uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, batteries or, or watches are a no-go. Again, my mom used to buy me watches all the time and get, she would get so hurt that I wasn't wearing them. And it's like, I, I just couldn't because it wouldn't, they wouldn't, oh, yeah. there was no point. And phones, um, they drain really quickly. It's yeah. uh, lots it's, of uh, little weird electrical things happen. Yeah, it basically it says that you have a very high electromagnetic field. Um, oh, that's what it stands for. Street light interference, because that tends to be a common effect of somebody is that you, you can actually, the street lights will flicker yeah. a lot. Around. Which is yeah. what happens to me. Exactly. So I, exactly. Yeah, and I was just sharing. I don't know if I can put it, I'm going to try Ed, to put this up. Mm -hmm. There it is. A person who seems to be able to cause street lights to go out just by right. walking or driving past them. This ability appears to completely spontaneous and intermittent. The person in question having mm -hmm. no apparent control over it. Right. Yeah. And he sees, he's got his, he's spelling slider with the capital S L I just like that. There was actually, I found a support group on Facebook for it. <laughs> because, uh, there's a support group. There's a support group. There's actually a group on Facebook and everybody's like, hi, you know, and it's almost like, uh, you know, you're jo joining some type of group where you're like, hi, I'm a slider and this is what happens to me. And it's, <laughs> yeah, me too. And it's the greatest thing. Yeah. Okay. So uh, if we go down this rabbit hole, like somebody else told me that that was maybe um, due to uh, maybe a possible alien connection that that I've may heard have that happened as well. So that. I mean, there's that aspect. So in your support group, is that something that comes up in that, or is it something it totally? It does. Um, it's. Some people touch on it. Not everybody does. I think it's just that, you know, it depends on um, the person because some people do um, really resonate with that. Um, sometimes, most of the time when they talk about it, it's just, it's really more about uh, it being electromagnetic phenomenon, but yeah. it is accepted that just about every slider has a great deal of psychic ability. Yeah. And I do personally feel that there is some type of connection there. I do because um, there's like, for example, I, I think there's a list here. Okay. Um, you have issues with metals, light bulbs and street lights are affected by you. Um, you can't wear watches as they are drained or stop working. Computers, cell phones, websites, electronics in general, something you have issue with. That's why I was getting um, like a new Walkman every year. Something was going on with that all the time. And um, very sensitive to energy. When your energy is heightened, um, it can, lead to increased heart rates or feeling of energy pulsating and being unaware of how to deal with the excess energy. Hence it being so important to ground. So, yes. yeah. And it's just yes. like, tell me more about myself, you know, type of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ed, for sharing all of that in yeah. the, in the comment thread. Oh, you yeah. Definitely yeah. More that was cool. and, and I've never heard of it and I wish I did because yeah. it was just something. Yeah. I, there's so many and, and you too. Yeah. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah. And there's, there's this, if not anything else, I mean, as we learn more about ourselves and then, you know, we can share that because you have this beautiful platform where you're educating people and, and the more you find out about yourself, then the more you can put out there yeah. to share with others. And, and we just we just commented on that earlier, like mm -hmm. that we're constantly learning and growing. Like, Absolutely. oh, we should be, you know. Yes. If yes. if you have a teacher that has said that, you know, that that's all they have to to give, then right. I would question that. I would feel exactly. like maybe you're not in the right spot. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Because it's. Um, I think there's so much that we don't understand that everything is possible. Yes. Yes. And 
all of these and I notice that the more and more that I run into people and and working with people or whoever I'm I, I just end up being connected with, they're just a mirror anyway. So you know, they just, and they are just a slightly different aspect from me. And they have one thing that I don't know. Maybe I have one thing that they don't quite know and everything can come together. And then, then there's an expansion. So it's just, the more you know yourself, the more you are going to run into people who mirror that. That's all. So one of the, you know, we've hit almost every one of those little talking points and one of the questions that I had uh, that I actually did write down was mm. like how our energy influences the world around us, like in helping people understand how mm. we're contributing to that collective consciousness and the collective energy around us. Could you talk about that? Uh, yeah. Um, there was a, there was a lot of, um, I, I would say right before I really started, um, on the path I'm on right now, where, you know, just kind of teaching and sharing with everybody. Right before I started teaching, I had gone through a really bad uh, clinical depression for about four years. I mean, it was terrible. Um, where I was basically just wanting to feel anything. It wasn't like I was feeling bad. It was just that I couldn't feel anything, which right. is terrifying for somebody who is empathic, intuitive, anything like that. It was basically like just the switch got turned off. And I pretty much, I think that um, the reason that had to happen is it was, uh, ah, yeah, it's, it's almost hard to talk about, but it's important. Yeah, it's, um, that had to happen because um, I've always worked with, I, I think because with martial arts, I've been, I've always been teaching, I'd always been connecting, I'd always been working with somebody else. And this was really a call to arms, work on yourself. Mm -hmm. Because it was, it caught up with me. And I think that, you know, sooner or later, it does, you do have to, um, you, you do have to do the work. Especially yeah. those of us who are teaching. Exactly. And it's exactly. a low, low. Yeah. And let me tell you, um, there were times where I wasn't sure if I was waking up the next one. I mean, it, that, let's be perfectly honest. It's not easy. And I had to, you know, and I spent four very, you know, powerful years doing as much, you know, doing the work and trying to get myself to that place. And, um, and it was not easy but I would do it again in a heartbeat because of the return. Like I, I found myself, I, I felt connected again. That feeling that I got way back when I had first seen my uncle Tony on that other side, I got access back to that feeling again. Right. And that, you know, that's, that's worth it. That that's definitely worth it. And I think I also need to be through that because then that way I could come from a place of authenticity when I do encounter other people who are in that spot. And until you do your own work, you're not authentic. Yeah, agreed. And that is the energy that you're putting out there is the, is really the authenticity, you know, just um, really being able to look in somebody's eyes and find like something there that you understand and um, want to help, want to connect with. And that's really the only way to change energy is to be able to relate to other people, you know, and see yourself in them and see them. Yeah. You. And it's, the moment that happens, then just magic happens. It's that's true. Really and yeah. understanding every thought, word, deed, and action, yeah. positive or negative, is rippling or out. Negative. Yes. Yeah. So and, and what do you want to contribute and how do you want to contribute and what do you want coming back to you? Yeah. And, and it's just, it's not about... I mean, it's really about accepting all those parts. And I think yeah. that, you know, that depression made me who I am. Yeah. And that, you know, and, and there are times I feel it, you know, you, you know, that it's it's coming in and you can feel it, you know, that feeling again. And, oh, you know, am I going to be back there again? But the thing is, is that that is a part of me. And I do accept that. And yeah. I just know that um, when it does start to show up, it's got a message for me. Yeah. And it means, you know, and it's calling my attention to something. So 
it's really, um, it made me more responsible for myself. Yeah. Thank and, you for uh, yeah. being brave and vulnerable and, and sharing that part of your yeah. story. It's, oh, it was hard. It, it was is. Hard. I remember from, for me, it was when I uh, was pregnant with my oh. young son and um, there was lots going on at the time. There was so much that was going on at the time. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a lot for sure. And that's, I mean, that's a story for another day and for sure, for sure um, I'll, I'll share it. But it's, it's pretty intense, but it really put me to what I'm doing now. Exactly. And, and he came and he's so intuitively connected. It was crazy when he was little, he was seeing like before he was three, he was seeing Kwan Yin at the end of the bed telling him, oh my goodness, like he's just a, he's just something. And I oh, remember right. at the time thinking like, why did you choose me? <laughs> How did this little soul contract through. happen? <laughs> yeah. Well, what you went through ready you to push me to remember who I was authentically so I could step into doing my path of purpose. Right. Absolutely. So, so that's that's why I, mean, I would never want somebody to beat themselves up for, you know, like not oh, no, being no. in that place because it's just yeah. like, no, because you're doing some very powerful work. And you may not recognize that person anymore, but you will be grateful for that person. Like you may not remember, remember yeah. like or resonate with that anymore but you're yeah. grateful so i just want to catch up some some we so cam uh stewart thanks for watching cam she's saying holy moly this is something i'm going to look into i'm constantly breaking technology this is about the slider, the slider just being near it and then i uh call to someone and they walk into the room and poof it works my whole staff actually has works around to ensure i get near as little tech as possible especially for presentations That's she, me. yeah can't wait to learn more thank you it's not a metal plate in my head after all street lights constantly have had this happen especially as a kid awesome learning new things oh, yeah. here um, Ed is just asking. Do I study the Tao? Um, I have. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Oh, oh, you're very welcome. Yeah, it's just that that is one of the, um, I, I'd say one of the most powerful things uh, that's really ever happened to me. And, and people will always look at me a little odd and say, really, you have depression? Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I remember times when um my cat that was uh, you know that was the only reason i could come up with to keep going on because you know i lived alone i didn't have you know i was very very solitary and I just was like, nobody's gonna know to take care yeah. of my cat mm -hmm. and, um, you know, it's i think when we and we're giving other people permission to be okay with their authentic truth too. And all of the emotions, that all of them are okay mm -hmm. to feel. All of them are important and make up who we who we are. Absolutely. For, I was a single parent. I was a single yeah, parent. I had been um, separated and divorced for such a long time. Mm -hmm. And um, like it was, I think six or eight years, my daughter, um, my I had my three older children and then my uh, daughter at the time was just turning three and she was eight. And I'm like, okay, so I need to have a date or two, had a little bit too much wine. And then I'm like, oh, no, I'm pregnant <laughs> at 34. Like it was, it was like, oh my goodness, how, and I had had so That's many so losses. To be. I know. Yeah. And I had had That's so many amazing. losses that I didn't, yeah. you know. There is a conscious vessel, Shoom, you know. Yes. Let's send her, let's and her powerful he's being. Stuck. <laughs> but we have, you know, my youngest son's dad and I have co-parented from day one in such a beautiful way that we we've raised a beautiful young man and we're we're friends that support each other. But you know that that's what it was. But that's when my my depression was so bad. They had a social worker with me to make sure that I was even going to take care of him when he was oh. when he was born. Right. But yeah. the story is so important. Like. It is. Um, Cause it was like two years moving out of that. And I, I had to go back to the hospital. I'm telling, yep. I'm sharing it. Now. So I had to go back to the hospital two years after he was born and uh, go into this room. There was two desks. One was empty. One had somebody sitting in it. And there was a woman in spirit 
behind the other desk. Yeah. And I, I'm like, I don't normally do this, but this is who I am. And, and are you comfortable if I share? And here's my business card so you can check me out. And it turned out to be the mom of the person who was not at their desk and they were having her funeral in that moment. And I said, so I will gift her this opportunity. If she wants to have a session, I would, I would love to just you know, do this for her. And um, a week, uh, she, she did email me. That person emailed me. And shortly after that, um, I went back to the hospital to do the reading. And it was the social worker that was with me when I gave birth to my son when I was not in a good space. Wow. And I tell people, I mean, I certainly add a that's, little bit more to it, but I mean, yeah, that to fair. me is the epitome of why we're here. We are here to share the gift of who we are unconditionally from our heart space. And the people who need it will, will be there to receive it. And then it will come back to us at any point in time. You don't know. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, there was actually things that when I, I remember going through, when I was going through that depression and everything, there were people that I met at the time that um, years later I was able, who had helped me through it. And then years later I was able to return the favor. Yeah, and it's a beautiful so thing. Amazing. That was it's, just so amazing. It's and powerful. The person was like, you're a completely different person. I was like, yeah. Yeah, so that, so that I, I think I was in a you know in a cocoon when I met you. That's all. We all come out of it eventually. Yeah, <laughs> so, we do. Yeah, we yeah. do. Yeah, it was amazing. And I think too. There's there's so much that we learn from that uh, um, grace, uh, forgiveness, yes, uh, uh, letting go of uh, guilt or shame. All of those things. Like there's, yeah. it's just powerful. Yes. No, it was, uh, that really um, put me on the path. And it was interesting because by the time I finished, like like I, I felt myself coming out of it, was right around my 40th birthday. As I felt oh. it. And it was like this weird yeah. little fucking timing. And I think that I just yeah. entered that decade so grateful. And, yeah. and it was just like, like, like it was this whole new world and, and and it really just started manifesting so quickly and a year later you know i met my husband and then boom and the next thing i know is then we're like oh let's do a business together and, da, 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 and it's just been a warp speed ever since so, so when you do and it, it's it's such a it's a hard thing to explain to people what that feels like but when you understand and you are taking the time to tap into your body and feel what different things feel like how your intuitive language speaks to you you feel when you're in flow and how quick you can manifest and you can feel when you're off kilter and yeah. you can start shutting it down as fast mm -hmm. so you know yeah. you, you do learn your responsibility in that yeah there's um ed is just asking if um, him and Rhonda had a little chat on the sidebar there about having us both on their show. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> we want to both do that together. So I'm sure we, love can, that. Yeah. we can make that happen. Um, Tessa is just saying thank you for sharing. And Sue, thank you so much for being here, Sue. You're two beautiful humans. Thank you for sharing your stories. This is part of it, right? That's, that's what it is. Because everybody's got a story. Everybody's got a story. It really, that's that's really what it is. And and the people who don't think they have stories usually have such powerful ones. Oh yeah. Yeah, and and they just they don't think they have a story. Like like for the longest time, I I, I remember like just walking around and, and I don't know who I am. I don't know what I I don't have a story and everything. And it just the amount that I learned during that period when I look back on it was incredible. And the things that were happening to me and, and, and just that's why I, I know I was in it and I couldn't really see it that way at the time. But now that I look back on it, what a, you know, um, what a helpful journey. I mean, just the things that I had really tapped into and I realized that it was absolutely perfect timing because I could not have gone forward to where I am now if that hadn't happened. Yeah, like that was exactly. just basically being like tempered by steel or something. And, and that's what needed to happen because you cannot, it's um, this type of work is about acceptance 
of mm -hmm. all aspects of who you are. Yeah. And if you don't accept every part, you're you're going to have to look at yourself sooner or later. It's going to come. You know, you're going to have to pay the price sooner or later. It's true. Yeah. Michelle is just saying this is such a hopeful discussion. I appreciate all of the heartfelt advice. And uh, Rhonda is sharing. Thank you for sharing. I'm always amazed yeah. the parallels that many of us that work with spirit have. That's it. There it is. Yeah. So I'm just aware that we, you know um, uh, of our time. Yes. Uh, can you share where people can connect with you? Because there's so many different places. I mean, even your TikTok, if they are wanting a That's little true. bit more yeah. tidbits and pieces of advice and things that you offer, you, there's a yeah. lot there on TikTok. Yes, and I do a TikTok live every Monday night. So, and I do channel messages and stuff. So, uh, the TikTok is uh, the Chakra Witch, but you could also um, probably the easiest way to get in contact with me is via our website, mylightclub.com. And that has basically connections to everything. So, you know, but if you do decide to uh, check out our also our YouTube channel, we do have a lot of um, free classes on there and a um, great deal of variety of videos that you can check out. And that's just Light Club Curiosity Shop on YouTube. So, Thank you so much for being here. I hope that we can do this again. I would love to. I mean, you know, I just, I, I'm, I'm so glad that I'm not the only one who um, had just found out about that whole slider thing. <laughs> no clue. That. It's going to explain your life. I mean, I used to go into stores and set off the alarm walking into the store. I just did that yesterday. I do it all the time. All the time. But it all translates. It all explains. And I honestly feel like when I can get to the point where we can, we can kind of control that electromagnetic field, Oh, baby, look out. <laughs> so, you know. That is fascinating. I'm going to so have to work on goals. that. Yeah, <laughs> so goals. So but thank, thank you so much, everybody, for being here today. Thank you to all of the people that were listening in, chiming in on the chat and asking questions. Um, you. If you are joining us next week, we do have um, Rhonda. Uh, who was part of the conversation today. She's going to be on next week. And I have actually... I'm. A surprise next week for, for Rhonda too. We're going to do a paranormal talk, but I've got some, you know, some paranormal holiday games for us to play. <laughs> so just to set off the season, have a little bit of fun and lightheartedness as well too. So you have Thank been you listening so to uh, Spirit Switchboard on the United Public Radio Network and the UFO Paranormal Radio Network 105.3 and 107.7. Have a good week, everybody. And we'll see you again next week. Thank you so much. Good night.